but Paul's writing letters to the churches because of situations happening in the churches. Mm-hmm. Like this is this letter that Paul wrote as a response to things that he has either seen or heard are happening in those churches, and he's addressing those things. Welcome to episode one of the Bible Study Discussion Podcast. My name is Wayne. I'm your host along with my co-host, Joel. Joel, and we are diving in to Galatians chapter one today. Joel, would you like to pray and then we'll dive in? Yes, I will. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you that we can just gather here and delve into your word. I thank you for this discussion that we're about to have. And I pray that you will just guide our conversation in your name. Amen. Amen. Uh, You're welcome to pause the video, pause the podcast, and and go read all of Galatians 1. We've already read it. We're going to read a few verses, and then we're just going to talk about uh, what we see there and how we can apply that to our lives. So I'll start. I'll read verses 1 through 5. That works. Yes, I couldn't find the verse numbers. 1 through 5. Paul, an apostle, not from men or by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the brothers who are with me. To the churches of Galatia, grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from this present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. I read, you know, in our prepping for all of this, Mm -hmm. something which just kind of shocked me about this introduction is, I mean, he is writing to Galatia, which is referring to a whole region Mm -hmm. of, what is it, South Asia? Yeah. I believe. And he is, you know, specifically writing to not just one church or anything, but to a multitude of them. Right. And in all the other books that he writes, he has a long greeting and a thanksgiving. Right. Mm -hmm. And in... Galatians specifically, even in this first section, you can see he says grace and peace to from God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. But he never goes on to give like a long um, thank you and right. praise. Mm-hmm. And so it just, you know, in that piece that I read, it was saying how serious this letter in general was and how much he was worried about mm-hmm this whole region. Yeah. And so I thought that that was like, that just brought that to mind. And I was like, well, now that you mentioned that, that's quite surprising. Yeah. That's something I had never picked up on. I, you know, the, the church in Colossians is a church in Colossians. The church in Ephesians is a church in Ephesians. They, and they pass those letters around, but mm-hmm. this is specifically to, to multiple churches in the region. And yeah, there's, there's not the Thanksgiving. And, and the reminder of that, I think sometimes we read the letters just as as Paul wrote a letter to the churches. Yeah. Um, but Paul's writing letters to the churches because of situations happening in the churches. Mm-hmm. Like this is this letter that Paul wrote as a response to things that he has either seen or heard are happening in yeah. those churches, and he's addressing those things. So to to realize like this is this is part of two way communication. Like we have we have two letters that Paul wrote to the Corinthians. Yeah. We don't have the letters that the Corinthian church wrote to Paul or any notes on his visits to, but like those are, those are responses to the situations in the churches. Yeah. So I thought that was also very interesting. Yeah. Like you said, it's not in all the other letters and even many other ancient letters, you see that Thanksgiving at the start and you, you don't see it here. Paul kind of just jumps into, to the issues at hand. Yeah. Which is refreshing and also like kind of shocking in a way, because it's, you know, he's being candid. He knows these people mm-hmm. in this area. And it's the same kind of thing of, you know, with family. You know, it's like, hey, sometimes it's nice to sugarcoat it and be like, OK, we're going to get together and we're going to talk about this through. And then we're going to get to the hard topic. Right. And then sometimes, you know, a family member will kick in the front door and be like, hey, <sighs> knock that off. Right. And so it's. It's kind of refreshing, but it's also surprising. Yeah. Yeah. Paul is is coming in hot, as it were. (laughs) Uh, Do you want to read verses six through nine? Yeah. I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we 
or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received from him, be accursed. For do I know persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I still please men, I would not be a bondservant of Christ. Mm -hmm. I will say I am also reading from the New King James translation. So and I'm that a, is... I'm a CSB guy, so if you're following along at home, we're using two different uh, two different translations, and that can be helpful because you you yeah. you get different things from the way that they were translated. Uh, yes. I don't speak uh, ancient Greek or Hebrew or Aramaic, so I rely on English because that's the, the one language that I somewhat speak pretty well. Single language person myself, so... So it's helpful to get those those different translations and see how scholars and really, really smart people have translated it through the years. I am learning sarcasm, though. That's Is that a language? Maybe. Okay. okay. I, I believe you. Okay. So, Paul, yeah, he's... Uh, my, my translation says, amazed that they're quickly turning away from the gospel, um, that there were there were Pharisees, there were people who were Jewish who were trying to say that they needed to adhere to all the Jewish customs to be Christ followers. Mm -hmm. And 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 Paul's saying that's that's actually not true. And later we'll see that he's has to, had discussions with people that that's not true. Um, but this made me think a little bit because... When we follow Christ, mm. um, it can be easy to fall into to put more things onto people yeah. than Jesus does to to put to add things to the good news that that Jesus Christ came and lived as a man, died for our sins, rose from the dead, and then we have mm -hmm. eternal life with Him. Um, yeah. So this made me think: like, what what do I add to the gospel of Christ? Like, do I expect do I expect things from people? That Christ isn't asking of them to come to him. Yeah, it's it's a, are we expecting perfection almost out of others and those that we try to share the good news with? Right. In Do a we, sense. Like trying to, trying to get them to a place where we think that they deserve God's grace. Yes. Which is ridiculous because that's, that's not how grace works. No. We, we never deserve it. Yeah. Um, but it's so easy when when we're living a certain way to to hope or expect that others would. Um, but just this, yeah, this this clarity and this passion that Paul comes in with and says, hey, this false gospel, it's not a real gospel that you've mm -hmm. heard. Um, we got to talk about that. And it is something that is also kind of interesting to see how that, as much as it's frustrating, has persisted mm -hmm. since, you know, Paul is addressing it here, you know, and it's still somewhat visible and it is visible in today and now you yeah. know all across the world that you know there's that expectation of oh i've got to make it to every sunday and every time the church doors are open mm. i have to be in church and you know that kind of perceived perfection even though that's not the case right and it's it's something I kind of wrestle with because, like, I I love a good list to follow. Yeah, I love to know what's expected of me. It makes things um, easy. And and the Pharisees, these these Jewish believers, were trying to put put those expectations on on non Jewish believers, people who didn't mm -hmm. have that cultural historic background. Yeah. Um. So I, I like I I don't I totally understand both sides. I see where it's easy to be like, hey, to follow Jesus well. Yes, you're saved by grace because they're on the cross, but also this. Yeah. And Paul's like, actually, just the grace of Jesus. And that's something that is so easy to say, but it's almost difficult to, like, wrap your head around it. Just in general, grace. And that's it. Right. Like, everyone's like, grace and grace, but grace as well as mm -hmm. no grace grace and I, like it's easy i can say that that i i know that that none of my works are good enough to earn god's love yeah i know that in my brain 
but then if I'm if I'm having conversations with people who don't agree with me, it's like, well, well, I kind of have to be right, but I I don't need to be right. I need to be right about Jesus, yeah, His love, and then we can have a conversation, and and we can, I think we can disagree with fellow believers about yeah. non-essential issues. Oh yeah, um, but I feel like sometimes those those things can be hard to disagree about because because we have to have it all completely figured out and mm. i think we have it all figured out uh i think maybe god's not as god's bigger than we think he is because yeah i don't i don't think i have the ability to have god all figured out um, yep no none at all um, do you want to read the next section? absolutely uh i'll read verses 11 through 17 17 okay for I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel preached by me is not of human origin. For I did not receive it from a human source, and I was not taught it, but it came by a revelation of Jesus Christ. For you have heard about my former way of life in Judaism. I intensely persecuted God's church and tried to destroy it. I advanced in Judaism beyond many contemporaries among my people, because I was extremely zealous for the traditions of my ancestors. But when God, who from my mother's womb set me apart and called me by his grace, was pleased to reveal his son in me so that I could preach him among the Gentiles, I did not immediately consult with anyone. I did not go up to Jerusalem to those who had become apostles before me. Instead, I went to Arabia and came back to Damascus. You know what I think is super interesting about that is that section in the middle and the end where... He talks about revelation because mm. that's one of those things that, I mean, until literally, you know, reading in and learning about this chapter and digging into it, I thought that he had, you know, more training. Like I've known the story of Paul. Right. But like, I always thought that like, yes, he had the revelation and then he went and learned mm. and then went to preach. And so I don't know why I ever thought that like he was never like, yes, he was a expert in Jewish law. Right. And then just overnight, he went and was an expert in, quote unquote, an expert in understanding Christ and the grace that Christ has. Yeah. Yeah, I love yes. that. That that <laughs> trying to think my words. Yes, the I think the the foundational aspect of the gospel there was that revelation. Like my yeah. guess is he through through the time before he ended up in Jerusalem had chances to study and have conversations. We didn't go straight to Jerusalem. Yeah. His he wasn't he wasn't trained under James or John or Peter, but like it was that that Damascus of that experience. Uh, with Jesus, he was blinded, he went mm -hmm. to see Ananias, regained his sight. But then from that, he he knew enough of the gospel at that point that he could share the gospel. Thank you. And that's, you know, he knew the basis of it. And man, yeah. for, for what he was intensely, per, like he was, he was going with letters to have Christ followers Murd murdered. Like that's who he was. He was he was the guy with the law. He was mm -hmm. the guy with all the other stuff that now he's talking to the Pharisees about not adding on. He he knew that way of life. He was he was entrenched in that from his birth. There's other places he gives his pedigree. Like he was a Hebrew of Hebrews, the tribe of Benjamin. Mm -hmm. Like he was he was the man in those circles. Correct me, who is you know considered the first martyr wasn't paul there at that I can't uh, think yeah of... stephen stephen thank stephen you Stephen martyred uh saul okay later paul is is holding coats that is what they're consenting to to okay. that which if you if you ever need a good recap of um the old testament the hebrew scriptures stephen's speech right before he's martyred martyred uh, is is a great recap of just kind of the story of God through the Old Testament. Okay. Um, 
saves you a lot of time between reading the whole Old Testament as well, which I encourage you to read. But if you have like six minutes, just read uh, Stephen's speech in Acts, okay. where you kind of recount some of that story. Uh, in, in this first chapter, I've seen the word grace like three times. I circled it because I'm a circler. So this uh, Paul from his mother's room called by God's grace um, mm-hmm. to preach among the Gentiles. So Paul, uh, when he was called, when he had that experience with Jesus, he knew that he he wasn't called to his own people, which is kind of interesting because you would think like he he understands the Jewish culture very, very well. But God had had a different calling for his life. Do you think that that was due to he was, if he was called to the Jews, Mm -hmm. he would be comfortable. And I feel like every time that I've witnessed, you know, people stepping out in faith Mm -hmm. it or you know when i've stepped out in faith myself it's been out of a place of discomfort you know it's the the missions trip kind of thing it's like you're going somewhere you're in a place that's unfamiliar to you and so then you are just ready to go and Mm. do more yeah i think that would that would definitely have a chance of playing into that i think also um i can see where Paul may have been like the people that he's writing to here or writing, writing against here where, because he was such a strict adherent to the Jewish law, that if he then knew Christ and went back to the Jews, would be, would he be tempted to, to bring all that baggage, to bring circumcision, to bring the dietary laws with him. Whereas if he's going to the Gentiles, like that's not part of the culture. So he has to, to maybe that would help him to, to just go, okay, it's, it's just Jesus. Because because it was just Jesus when I met him on the Damascus Road, and it was just Jesus in these other incidences. So it's, he's able to, I guess, more clearly articulate that that these things aren't as important. Okay, and be sent yeah. to the Gentiles. It's like <sighs> mind blown. <laughs> yeah, but then yeah, they didn't go, didn't go back to see Peter right away. Didn't go to see James no. and John right away. <laughs> Does he state anywhere how long he was away in Arabia before he went to see the apostles? That's a great question. Joel, why don't you read verses 18 through 24? Because it's going to answer that for you. All right. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem. Oh, right. There's my answer. <laughs> don't, 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 don't you love when you have a Bible question and you keep reading the Bible? Like, oh, all right then. I should have seen that, you know. All right. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and remained with him 15 days. But I saw none of the other apostles except James, the Lord's brother. Now concerning things which I wrote to you, indeed, before God, I do not lie. Afterward, I went into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and I was unknown by face to the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. But they were hearing only he who formerly persecuted is now preaching the faith, which he once tried to destroy. And they glorified God in me. Yeah. So three years before he went to Jerusalem and then and then he only saw Peter and uh, James, James, the Lord's brother. And that's also kind of surprising that he was gone for three years Hmm. and then he only came back. For 15 days. Right. Like, you know, history on me. My parents, like I said, were missionaries. And we went to the mission to the mission field in Africa for four years. Mm -hmm. And we, our first time we went for, it was like two and a half years. And afterward, we were so exhausted. We had to come back for almost like three months. Hmm. To come back and recover. And even during that time, we had friends and family come and visit us right. in, on the mission field. And like, hmm. I just couldn't imagine how draining that is as, you know, a singular person. Of course, at the time I was a young kid, right. so I just was a witness to that. Mm-hmm. But 
the the strength that the Lord gave Paul to be on the mission field for three years, day in and day out, and then only come back to essentially say hi and bye. Right. And then be on his way again. That's that's phenomenal. Yeah. He came came into Jerusalem and and had those those couple of conversations. And I mean, I feel like you can have you can have a lot of conversations in two weeks. You can. Um but we'll we'll read in chapter two next week how long he's got again before he comes back to Jerusalem. And mm-hmm. it's it's even longer. Um and then yeah, the, the churches in in Judea and the Judean churches, it says, um, they heard that he who formerly persecuted us now preaches the faith he once tried destroyed. So they've they've heard about Paul, and, and this is what I love. Verse 24, and they glorified God because of me. So mm-hmm. I think so often in in our modern Western churches, um, especially churches I've been a part of, mm-hmm. there can be competition between churches. Oh yeah, we want to have the most people. We want to have, you know, we want to have the best um, music so that we have more people. We want to have the most dynamic preaching so that we have more people. Um, the most comfortable seats. The most comfortable seats. I mean, I, yeah. I, that's what I look for. <laughs> um, <laughs> as I gave you a folding chair to sit on for the podcast. <laughs> Um, but, but these people of these churches hear that Paul is preaching Mm -hmm. and, and God's glorified because of that. And Mm -hmm. for me, that's just that reminder, like we can, we can celebrate when we see other churches, when we see other Christians, when we see other evangelists doing well and spreading God's grace. Like I, I have, yeah, I have people that I that I f- uh, follow on the YouTube's. You know, Joshua Verwers, Dean. I can't remember his last name, but he's a great guy. Trey Van Camp. Um, mm-hmm. And I don't have to be jealous when their video pops off. No, I don't have to be jealous when uh, everybody's commenting and interacting with their video because yeah. they're doing good work and yeah. God's being glorified. So I can celebrate with them and come alongside them. I can cheer them on. Yeah. Because they're doing good work for the gospel. And it's like, why does everything have to be like a competition? Right. And it's like, I wonder if the one thing which also just kind of surprised me, which is, you know, drastically different from when this was written, was, you know, they, um, where is it? Verse 23. Mm hmm. Where it's like they only had just started hearing of him mm. after three years. Could like in today's society, three years, most people have heard of it and forgotten about it. Right. Like, you know, information moves so quickly mm. today that, you know, after three years, they're like, hey, remember that one guy that was like, you know, that murdered all our friends? I guess that's kind of hard to forget. Yeah, you remember that guy, but. <laughs> You remember that guy that was famous on Vine three years ago? Whatever nope. Vine was, uh, most people probably won't know what Vine is, but. right? <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that news travels slower, and I think that that gives Paul the time to to mature. Yeah, before he interacts with the guys in Jerusalem, gives him a chance to to really understand his calling and what he's called to do. I think yeah. sometimes even with that that comparison stuff, we we. We look at somebody else's calling and we wonder why God hasn't led us to those results. But that's it's not God's calling. Paul wasn't supposed to go to Jerusalem and and be in charge of those churches. Paul was no. supposed to take the gospel to a whole new set of people, a whole new culture of people. And, you know, it's, you know, through that, that, you know, so many more people were able to hear the word and right. come to the gospel. and. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, it was kind of Paul who started the whole idea of, oh, Jesus isn't just for the Jews. It's for everyone. And yeah, I mean, he was he was a big part of that. I mean, Peter Peter had the vision with the, the food coming down and, and Jesus tells him that nothing is unclean, that he's called clean. Um, but yeah, Paul really took the gospel to the non-Jewish people. That's it's That's good incredible. stuff, indeed. Well, that was chapter one. Next episode, we'll dive into chapter two. Uh, there are six chapters in Galatians, so we know what we're doing for at least the next five weeks. But Joel, at the end of every episode, what I want to do is I want to bring out the question cube. 
Okay. <gasps> and that gives us each a chance to ask a question, a random question, just off the top of our heads. All right. So, Joel, my question for you. All right. If you decided to go on a spiritual journey, where would you go and what would you do? By the way, this is these are not like Christian cards. This is probably the only card that mentions spirituality. I've never seen this card in this deck before, um, but that's the one that came up. Okay. Do you not believe me? It's true. That's what it oh, says. I just want to, you know, read it over to make sure. Yeah. It's if you decided to take go all the time you need to think about journey. it. Yeah, fifteen seconds. <laughs> okay. I think I would like to go to Nepal. Okay. Part of it is, I mean. I want to travel more and I want to see the world. Some of it is to get me out of my comfort zone. Mm. Um, I would love to do, you know, something in nature and to just see what God has created. And so I think that Paul would be a cool place to do that. Excellent. All right. Now you get to pick a question out of the question box for me. Sorry, the question. Cube. Which event in the past, present or future would you like to witness in person? I feel like the Sunday school answer would be the, the resurrection of Jesus. I mean, yeah, that is a pretty Sunday school, but that and would be a really cool event to see. And that's very true. But I think, uh, so we'll put that one aside. Mm -hmm. And then uh, past, present, future. How are you supposed to know the events of the future? That's true. I mean, um, there's, you know, some interesting scientific ones that are right. supposed to, you know, come about. I think I would just, I would just go back um, to the, I think it was uh, mid nineties when Cal Ripken Jr. was playing baseball and watch him play in the game where he broke the Iron Man record for the most games in a row. Okay. Um, good seats there with, with my family and a few hot dogs. I think that would be, that'd be a fun, that'd one. be a good place to be. If I could jump in and answer that question, I heard, I mean, you know, arbitrary scientific lingo that I think it's Beetlejuice, I could totally be mistaken, was is supposed to go supernova. And when it does, it will be as bright as a full moon for a solid month. Hmm. And that would just kind of be phenomenal to see. Yeah. Yeah, in of of a you know random event in the future, right? I think that'd be a pretty cool. One. Absolutely. <clears throat> so we're supposed to do sign offs. I think I'm ready for yours. When I first started reading the Bible, I was you know enamored by Paul and the thing that he said. You know, at every letter that he wrote, mm -hmm. and so. I was going to use that because that one just has stuck with me and I have just enjoyed that blessing over myself. And I hope that I can bless other people with that. Let us have it. And so it is. I will make it simple and not mess it up by just reading this one. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you.